My guest with uh, Urban Sanctuary this morning is my beloved friend, PJ Hirabayashi. Uh, many of you met PJ before through our um, spirituality and arts retreats, and I'm grateful to have PJ uh, interview today with me um, because of her involvement in the larger community in so many ways and how uh, she's our, our bridge um, to the, in the urban sanctuary community to so many other parts of the community. So PJ, um, I'm so grateful for you to be here. You want to say hi to the urban sanctuary community? Yes. Hello, everybody. Oh, my gosh. I feel like um, our relationship is deepening because I've had such the pleasure of being in invited and welcomed by you on several other occasions at the Urban Sanctuary. And so wonderful to be here. So, PJ, you have traveled all over the world, though, not just San Jose. You're known for San Jose Taiko and now Taiko Peas, but you traveled all over the world playing Taiko with others. What gift um, has that experience given you? Oh, I think, um, well, first of all, I'm just so grateful that I have had the opportunity to be able to do what I love doing, and that's playing drums, and to share it, and to go uh, to places that I would have never thought I would ever. Um, it's the power of the drum that really opens up uh, this new avenue of connection, you know. Um, it's the vibration. It's a vibration that kind of just opens our hearts and our, our minds. And it's that um, through creativity, it's through this performance art for me that I'm able to share um, my stories, myself, my energy, and, and being very... Um, intentional about uh, wanting to uplift and also share. Um, and the gift goes, uh, it's reciprocal. It's uh, from the community who's receiving as audience and equally for me and, and the ensemble on stage. So that's the gift. So PJ, that's an incredible experiences you've had. And, and I know you also, the history of your own um, family and your experience has really shaped you in, in equal ways. Um, so I just want to ask, it was, was your family uh, impacted by the World War II Japanese American incarceration camps? And if so, how did you, how did that experience shape how you are in the current uh, situation with issues of racial justice? That's a good question. <laughs> yes, um, my family uh, was uh, incarcerated in Poston, Arizona. Uh, both my parents, um, father and mother's families were there. They didn't know each other at, uh, each other at that time, but they were both there in, in different parts of the camp. Um, it, it, it was not until I was 19 years old that I found out what camp was. I remember as I was growing up uh, as a young child at the dinner table, if there was any reference made by my parents when they said camp, the only thing that I can think in my mind was summer camp. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until here I am almost uh, as a young adult that I've, I learned about um, incarceration of World War uh, during World War II of people of Japanese ancestry. So um, definitely that camp experience, and it, this is all more reflection because I was already in it and not knowing what, what it was that was already in my body or trying to make, to, to understand what happened. But I, I was already shaped um, by an invisible PTSD that my, my parents still harbored um, uh, from the camp experience, from their, their families being um, incarcerated. <clears throat> Things like even them telling me so that I would be safe is like, don't rock the boat, you know, uh, uh, don't talk back, 
which meant that I best not even say what's on my mind. Um, don't bring attention to yourself. You know, it, it was like I felt I was in this very closed vessel of not showing, which made me a very, very shy kid and um, not being able to speak my mind. Uh, so to bringing that all into where I am right now, uh, that experience really um, became, I w became aware of, of this as I found Taiko, the drum, uh, to actually help uh, bring my full potential and understanding my identity, understanding about my uh, uh, family roots, my cultural roots, and understanding who I am as an American. Um, so that's why, for me, the drum has been that touchstone for me to explore so much more deeply who I am and how I connect with others. Um, right now, uh, in terms of uh, civil unrest, um, all communities are and individuals are kind of like, what do I do? Uh, how do I really understand what's going on. Um, and I would say that for me, I have over 45 years of uh, being a part of a larger Taiko community globally. And knowing that um, this is a community that I would like to help shape, you know, to its fullest potential. Uh, we are convening and have been convening with certain people, groups that are also trying to understand what's happening on the outside. What can Tycho do? What, what am I to do as an individual? And um, these dialogues are just so refreshing for me. Uh, it becomes intergenerational. It's a conversation that all, all of a sudden opens up more um, vulnerability. And I, I love it, yeah. As you know, as you were telling that, the power of an instrument um, to, to heal really struck me. Um, and so since the, you said the drum was just a way for you to really process this trauma that had been passed on to you, and, and now, now here, the Taiko community you know, the, of drum, drummers, is really seeing how that music can be a vehicle to heal our our, our larger community, and what what an incredible thing! Wow, you you know too, you have so lived through some profound challenges, and and now we're living with some that we never imagined we would have. Um, overwhelming, almost overwhelming things going on around us. So I want to ask you, what simple wisdom you carry and offer. Um, my friends and I are talking a lot about this in our community. Is what simple wisdom do we carry and can offer ourselves and each other that might help us navigate these times with grace? Of course, there are, I oftentimes go into places of despair and, ah, <laughs> oh no. But yeah. when I feel overwhelmed, it's like that's when I can kind of like uh, say, you know, um, this is a continuum. I have to think of myself like this is, I am an evolutionist, <laughs> evolutionary, you know, that to evolve and be a part of that evolution is um, uh, like how am I not doing it by myself, but how am I aware of a greater connection and understanding interconnection, more of that feeling of we are all the same one family and um, when I start feeling the emotional reactive part of me um, I have to kind of like take that breath and with grace uh, and with kindness to myself understand that it, it starts with me first and uh, yet I know you to be a person um who also uh, does not sit around. <laughs> so you don't, you don't appear to be kicking back, BJ, um, these days. Um, so what is it that's, that's getting you up 
and out each day and and where um where where are you focusing i know you're a person of great energy so where are you focusing your energies uh these days um you know sometimes i feel like uh <laughs> uh Maybe I'm doing too much, but then even when I hear myself that I, I have to use discernment, you know, this is where I can really feel where I am to be my at my best. Um, but I do feel I come from a feeling of energy anyway. <laughs> and um, I think I've shared with the urban sanctuary before this image. It's called the Ocean of Chi, and my friend Julia Mandala Weaver had uh, drawn this image that has had such profound impact that once I see this, it's just a reminder, like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, I'm just not uh, a person standing and using up space here. <laughs> uh, in the world oh, but I'm being downloaded infinitely from the universal from the cosmos from the earth and just feeling this uh, mastery that's the belief I've had, this mastery of this energy coming through me that if I want to be a part of yeah I become the creator I become the director I become you know the artist behind where the energies will flow and go so, um, yeah, I'll look at my list of things and I go, yeah, you seem kind of busy, but it's, <laughs> but, but it, it's coming from the same love and passion and that I feel like I'm being fueled by this infinite energy that, uh, uh, as in Japanese, there's this uh, phrase called okagesama de, okagesama de is like, um, to the invisible, thank you very much for who I am. Uh, because of you, I am who I am. Um, and feeling that energy come through me and remember, remembering, it's like I, I don't feel like I'm trying to be on a crusade by myself. Um, well, you, you are definitely part of the fabric of the community. <laughs> so I can see that you draw that energy from others and, and give it back to as well. So just I want to close with, um, with something I've been asking every person I interview. Um, and so it's been really interesting to hear the different answers. Uh, so is, is during these times, is there a poem, a prayer, a song, uh, something that uh, grounds and centers you at these times that you keep close at hand? Yes. Um, there's an author by the name of Clarissa Pinkola Estes. She's, uh, uh, she wrote the book Women Who Run With Wolves, and this is back in 1992. Um, and there's uh, something that she refers to that um, <laughs> when the world is going in crazy and everything's in chaos she made she had a response and this is what uh, really is uh, inspiring to me one of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul soul on deck shines like gold in dark times do not lose heart. We were made for these times. Oops. PJ, thank you. You've heartened us in so many ways. Uh, you, I feel my heart expanded just from being with you. And so I want to just thank you for your relationship with our community of Urban Sanctuary and with the community of Japantown Taiko Peace, San Jose Taiko, Creatives for Compassionate Community, um, all those organizations that are part of uh, the Beehive um, that's busy with activity and, um, and generativity um, that you bring 
to our community. So thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Pastor Dana. It was wonderful to be here with you.